Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Bundles and today I'm doing a video going over how to bring more traffic to your website. This video is imperative if you run an online business, goes over some tips that help me and that can help you as well. So before we get started, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure to click that subscribe button and let's get right into the video. So the first thing that I wanna go over with you as far as bringing traffic to your website is just to stop and reiterate how important traffic building is to your online business. Um, you know, I first started selling hair extensions. There was a lot of things that I overlooked. Uh, there was a lot of things that I kind of put on the back burner that I really didn't pay as much attention to as I should have. And one of those things was tracking how many people came to my website. You need to know that. You want to make sure that you know where you're at. Um, this kind of gives you a feel for um, the areas that are most likely being attracted to your website, the type of uh, people that are going to your website. And it just, it's, it's all of your analytics on your site. You need to be aware of that. Um, that's why I personally use Shopify because Shopify gives me all of that information in my online store. And I will do a separate video on that, on the analytics. But I just want to take time to say, guys, pay attention to the visitors that you have going to your website. If you just launched your website yesterday, for example, and you've had 15 visitors to your site, then you need to be making sure that your goal for next month is at least double that. You want to make sure that you're always growing traffic. It's I don't want to say it's a numbers game, but in sales, it kind of is. The more people that you are exposed to, the more people that see your website, see your products, see your services, the more, the higher the, the likelihood of you getting an order, the more money that you can make. So be conscious of the people that are going to your website and keep track of it. So with that being said, first thing that I want to kind of bring up uh, to you as far as getting traffic to your website is taking advantage of all of your social media platforms. So what that means is, for instance, say you have an Instagram page. Um, let me say this too. I, I know I'm saying a lot of things, but I want to make sure that I cover everything. People are only going to take your business as serious as you take it. If you have a hair business, for example, and you're not advertising your hair business on Instagram, you're not advertising on Facebook, you don't have business cards, you don't have a business name, you don't have a business email address, it can come off to some people that you don't care about your business. Not saying that you don't, but it, it's not easy for someone to find your business and it's not easy for someone to purchase. Keep in mind that you're not always selling to people that know you personally. You're not always... Um, going to or your goal is to not always get orders from people who know you directly you want to make sure that you can reach out to as many people as possible if i don't know you i want to make sure that i can go onto your page and see the, the product that you're offering the product that you feel so strongly about so passionate about i want to be able to see something with your with your product on it um, whether that be on your uh, instagram your facebook someplace and no it doesn't all have to be on your main personal um, profile, but like I said in previous videos, there should definitely be a link on your personal um, pages to your business because, I mean, that's a great way to generate traffic. So on your Instagram page, make sure that your business link, especially if it's your business Instagram, is um, included on your your profile. Not only that, but you want to make sure that you post certain things that lead customers to go to your website. You don't wanna just give everything up on Instagram. You wanna have your customers do some kind of work. Don't have them do too much because like I said, if you're doing, if you're having people do too much or jump through hoops or anything like that, then you, you, you raise the chance of them going someplace else and placing that order. And you don't want that, but you also want them to take time and be interested enough to go to your website. So if you post something on Instagram, say it's a sale that you're posting, $10 off. Maybe you can put something like, or a suggestion would be to put something like head over to badchickhair.com for the discount code or subscribe to our mailing list to stay updated on discounts like this in the future. Or here's a picture of our new wig. Make sure to head over to our website to check out the new arrivals that we have. You always want to say something, even, let me say this too, even if you're not getting all the likes, likes, I don't want to say they don't mean anything. But trust me, I've posted pictures and literally have gotten like maybe four likes on the picture, but I've gotten over 
20 sales on that product. Seriously. So I just want to, you know, encourage you guys to likes don't don't stop posting on social media because you don't get likes. Because whether you get likes or not, you can still generate income from those posts. Because all a post is supposed to do is advertise and tell your customers a little bit about, a little bit more about what they can get, why it's beneficial to them, and what you're offering. So um, when you make a post, especially if you're doing like a sale, don't give everything in that post. Leave something for the customer to actually go to your website and do some footwork, not too much, but some footwork so that they'll land on your page. You want to make sure that you're getting as many people to your page as possible. Like I said before, the more people that come to your page, the higher chance you have of getting an order. I'm looking at my phone, guys, so I apologize if I keep looking down. I want to make sure that I remember everything. The next place that I want to make sure that you take advantage of getting traffic to your website is in your email. So if you have a business email, which if you don't, I suggest that you do that right now after you get done watching this video. Say your hair company is called pillowhair.com. Then you want to make sure that you set up an email, pillowhair at gmail.com, pillowhair at yahoo.com. These are free email addresses or email accounts that you can create. You don't have to worry about any investment. This is this free stuff that you can do to, to advance your business and to become more professional and to just run your operation a lot smoothly. On that email address, though, you want to make sure, like I said, professionalism, you want to make sure that that's carried throughout your email. So in the signature line, the signature is what you put at the bottom. Thank you. What I put in mind is thank you, Brittany badchickhair.com. I put my Instagram name and I also put a few links to my videos. You want to make sure that you include your website. Include your website. Even if you feel like that customer already knows your website and it may be redundant, you always want to make sure that you leave your trace wherever you go. Just like if you're walking in the snow, I'm always leaving my footprints wherever I'm going. I always want there to be a trail from me to my business. So make sure that you're doing that. If you don't have your um, signature set up, it's very easy to do, especially if you have an iPhone. I'm actually going to show you guys how to do that now. So you'll want to go to settings. I'm trying to find it. Let me just go off memory because I can't. This phone is not working right for me. Let me see. All right, let's go off memory. So you want to go to settings. You want to make sure that you go to, I think it's mail. And there's an option in your phone somewhere where you can choose. Um, you can go to all of your different email accounts that are attached to your phone. And it says signature. There's an option on your iPhone that says signature. You want to make sure that you go to those signatures and put what you want your signature to be. Um, so on your personal email, if you just wanted to say your first and last name, that's fine. But on your business emails, it's imperative. Make sure to be professional. Say your name, list your name, and list the, a, a website link to get customers back to your site. You never know. Somebody may get an email and may forward it over to their mom to review. Okay, now their mom has your, has your website address. They may get an email and maybe want to forward it over to their friend. Okay, now their friend has your, your website address. You never know what people are doing. You never know where your website or where your business could, could end up or whose eyes or, or who is looking for, for a service that you're offering. So be sure to never miss any opportunity and include your business um, website address in your email signature. The next thing that I want to go over is make sure um, that you advertise. So the advertising, you can definitely advertise a few different um, ways I went over how to advertise or I went over a few different uh, advertising outlets in my prior videos, YouTube, um, Facebook, Instagram, things like that. But you also want to make sure that you're advertising on Google. Google ads do cost money. I don't want to say make sure because sometimes I do and sometimes I don't source to use. I mean, any way that you get your name out there is really great. So if you want to use Google just to kind of get your website address out there a little bit more. I used that in the beginning. Um, it is like a paid service, so you do have to pay per click. So keep that in mind. Google um, ads is something you know to keep, keep in mind as well as Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. 
for, for advertising or marketing. Um, another thing you want to do is stay relevant. You want to stay relevant on your social medias. You want to stay relevant in your newsletters or your, your email listings that you send out to your customers. You want to always make sure that they have a reason to go back, whether that be that you're updating the website with new information, whether that be that you have a really good video that's explaining a service that you offer, whether that be they can go there to get discount codes, whether that be they can go there and possibly um, get entered into a giveaway, whatever it could be, make sure that you keep yourself and your company relevant. There has to be some reason for uh, your customers to want to come back, not just because you are who you are, not just because you have a great product, but there has to be more than that. When people start selling hair, when they get into any business, they automatically think, I found a good vendor, I have good hair, I'm going to start getting orders. Wrong. It's so much more than you. It's so much more than the quality of hair that you're selling. The business is a full business. So it's more than just getting inventory. It's more than just a website. There's actually legwork and uh, thought and creativity that has to go into the, the, the behind the scenes. So with that being said, um, just stay relevant, actively post. I know sometimes it can get discouraging to post on any platform. It can get discouraging to post on YouTube. You know, you spend time making a video and say you only get a few views or you spend time editing a picture of your hair company and say you only get a few likes. Don't let that discourage you though. Because like I said before earlier, it's very important to not get caught up in the likes. Don't assume because you're not getting likes that people aren't watching you. On Instagram now, they have like a profile visit count or something like that, where you can tell how many people go to your profile and how many people look you up, how many people are checking to see what you're doing or checking on your, your business page to see what, what you're offering. So you can kind of see, wow, I didn't get too many likes on this, but I got some orders off of this post and this many people have, have, have come over to, to look at my profile. So you kind of have to look at different things. Don't get discouraged. Even if you feel like it's not going how you want it to go, it may not be, but it could still be working and you not knowing. You never know. Because for me, before I got really into social media like this and before I really started working with women on drop shipping wholesale, before I really got my like out there for bad check hair, I was someone that watched videos. I never really clicked like, not because I didn't like the video, but just because, I don't know, I just, it didn't occur to me. Like I would just be watching the video, get so caught up in the video, or I would forget to, um, sometimes I would finish the video, sometimes I wouldn't. Sometimes I'll remember to like it, sometimes I wouldn't. But the whole point is, I liked videos that I didn't necessarily click like. You know what I mean? And I liked pictures on Instagram that I never really clicked like. And it wasn't because I was being, um, hateful and it wasn't because I just didn't want that person to succeed or anything like that. I really just wasn't thinking about liking the picture. I, I liked it in my head and in my heart, but my finger wouldn't like the, the thing because I really wasn't into social media like that. I looked at it occasionally, but I wasn't, that wasn't what I, what I was um, primarily doing with my day. And that wasn't a part of my full schedule, if you know what I mean. So just coming from someone that was not on social media like this until months ago, it's possible for people to like what you're doing and you not actually get the results from the like button. It is possible. And it doesn't mean that they are hating on you or don't want you to succeed. It could simply be that they just don't think about it or that they forget while they're watching or while they're seeing your picture. So keep on posting, stay relevant. Um, the next thing I want to say is stay connected to your website. And I kind of went over this too. Um, you want to make sure that you constantly update your website. So new information, when people go back to your site, it still needs to be like familiar. You don't want your site to change drastically every month. One month you go to the website and it looks like this, but then the next month you go and your whole theme and brand change and the next month, everything changed again. You don't want that. I'm not saying change isn't good. It's good to make some changes. Sometimes it's good to update your pictures, your, um, themes and things like that, but you still want to have like a consistency because people purchase what they're familiar with. So you want to make sure that your customers are still comfortable with going to your website and still purchasing, but your information is up to date. So that means if you have a new product, you are very detailed in what you offer now. If that means that something changed with your policy, that's updated on your website. If that means that um, you're having a sale, that information is included on your website. So you want to make sure that you stay up to date. Um, you don't want to have a, just for example, a sale, what a, a Halloween sale going on and now it's Christmas and you're still offering Halloween discounts. You want to make sure that you stay relevant because like I said before, 
people are only going to take your business as serious as you take it. So if someone goes to your website, people just are judgmental. They are, that's the world we live in. And they, you know, see, they, they want to make sure that you're up to date. They want to make sure that your website is active and they see that nothing has been touched on your website since your Halloween sale. And it's now moving into Valentine's Day. It, it, it kind of raises like a concern. Like, are these people still working on the website? I mean, do these people, are these people still in business? Is this a legit website? So you want to make sure that you're always up to date because those people that come to your website, you want them to keep coming. You, you, you do. You want them to come and you want them to feel comfortable. The next thing that I want to go over with um, in bringing traffic to your website is newsletters. <laughs> newsletters and your blog. So I do have a blog for Bad Check Hair. I think from the blogs that I posted in the past. So your blog, blogs can be like I would do hair care tips. I would do different um, styles that I went over with my, you know, with the hair from my company. I would go over different tricks and tips that I learned about installing closures and things that work for me, how to wash certain hair textures that Bad Chick Hair offers and things like that. So if anyone is Googling, not even Googling Bad Chick Hair, but just Googling um, how to wash hair or how to wash deep wave bundles or anything like that, there's a chance that my name may pop up, my blog may pop up. And that's another direct hit because my blog always has my website address. So make sure if you are creating a blog for your hair company, that your blog goes right back to your website. Refer, refer, refer back to you. You be your biggest referrer, you be your biggest advocate, you be your biggest promoter. Always leave a trace. Same thing with your newsletters. If you're sending out newsletters to your customers that subscribe to your online mailing list, you want to make sure that that newsletter has a link back to your website. I've received some newsletters and it did not have any link. It was just, it told me about the company. It told me what they were offering, but it did not have a link. It had go here if you're interested. And then I would click that and it, it wouldn't go anywhere. It would just be like, like standard text, not an actual link to go to take me to their page. So you know, most of the time that I'm online shopping, it's at night or, you know, I'm doing, I'm multitasking and I really don't have the time or even feel like, okay, let me search, let me copy and paste and, and put this in my browser. I just want a convenient link. So do your customers. So do your customers. So make sure that you have a link to your web in your um, newsletter that goes right back. So you might want to send a newsletter that says upcoming Black Friday sales. These are pre-ads or these are pre-discounts. Uh, these are the discounts that we are gonna be offering on this date until this date. Make sure to take advantage of them. Go ahead, click here now to register for our Black Friday promo or go ahead, click now to view our products um, so that you can start thinking now which products you'd like to take home with you on Black Friday. Just different things like that, but make sure you have a link that goes right back um, to your website so that you can continue getting traffic. I think so many people, you, I don't want to say this for everyone, but a lot of people kind of take, um, for, take it for granted, the people that already are your customers. And I see this not even just in the hair business, but in bigger companies too. Um, you, you definitely, your goal is to always get new clients. Your goal is to always get new customers. It's very important that while you're doing that, you continue to keep your existing customers because what's the point of gaining a whole bunch of new customers but losing your old customers. I mean, it does it, it doesn't make sense. You want to make sure that those customers are still familiar with your website because just because they purchased from you last week and that's how you have their email address doesn't mean that they're planning on purchasing from you again in the future. Just because they bought something for you from you on your Valentine's Day sale doesn't mean that they planned on buying something for you from you on in your um spring for your spring sale doesn't mean that. So you always have to continuously build that traffic, whether it be with existing customers or new customers to your website. So that's really what I wanted to go over. I just really wanted to stress the importance of building a traffic to your website and making sure that you set yourself a goal. If you don't know where you're at, it's really kind of hard to tell not only where you're going to build like a projection sheet and like a, a track record and it's, for me, it's hard to build a goal. If I don't know where I'm at, it's kind of hard for me to say this is where I want to be in, in, in another month. This is where I want to be by the end of the year. So if you do have a website, especially if you're through Shopify, I always mention Shopify because that's what I personally use, even when I build websites and that's the, the platform that I'm most familiar with. So if you have Shopify, I know that you have an analytics section right on the right hand side of your, not right, left hand side of your screen. 
and you can go there and see how many people are going to your website. You can go there and see how many people have left their orders in your cart. You can just check the the health of your whole your whole online business from there. So please take advantage of that. Make sure that if you are at maybe 12 visitors a day, you want to double that for the truth gradually increasing and if you don't double it that's fine like i said before everyone has a different rate everyone's putting different time and different money into their business so everyone's business is going to grow differently when i tell you things to do or when i um, say what I, I think you should do or what i recommend you do is because it's what i've tried and it's worked for me so don't get discouraged guys continue to build your client base continue to build your customers and continue to uh, build your, your traffic to your website by any means. Um, yeah, and, and you will definitely see your orders grow. The more people go to your website, the more orders you'll get, the, the higher chance you have of actually reaching checkout and people actually purchasing from your store. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'm more than happy to answer them and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.